top seven things you need to know about Ukraine. Ukraine is at the heart of Europe, not on its periphery. It is the second largest country in Europe by area and seventh by population with over 40 million citizens. This crisis will affect everyone. Russian President Vladimir Putin resents American primacy in world affairs. He hates democracy and is threatened by it on its borders. Putin has ruled Russia for over 20 years, manipulating the Russian constitution to stay in power while killing or jailing potential opponents. The Russian president has intervened to support dictators from Belarus to Syria to Venezuela. He wants to restore imperial rule in the former satellites of the USSR. In 2019, the Ukrainian people elected Volodymyr Zelensky to replace his predecessor supported by Moscow. Putin invaded Ukraine now to install a puppet regime in Kyiv and to prevent the country from joining the pro-West, pro-democratic NATO alliance like other neighboring states. But he also invaded Ukraine to erode the US-led liberal rules-based global order. In this sense, his invasion is about more than Ukraine alone. Diplomacy did not work. The leaders of the United States and the European nations met directly with Putin to prevent war. The Russian president advanced positions that the West could not accept, chiefly that Ukraine would not be allowed to join NATO. Meanwhile, Russia used its veto as a permanent member of the UN Security Council to block any measures that would have stopped the invasion. Vladimir Putin has been building up to this invasion for years and has grown increasingly brazen. From invading Georgia in 2008, to illegally annexing Crimea from Ukraine in 2014, to intervening in Syria in September 2015. In the absence of strong Western pushback, Putin calculated that he could strike Ukraine with impunity. He perceived the West as weak and risk averse. During the winter of 2021-22, Putin amassed the largest concentration of firepower in Europe since World War II on Ukraine's borders. But that's not all. Putin used all elements of state power, economic, diplomatic, informational, and military, to advance political objectives, to destabilize Ukraine, and create a completely false pretense for war. Simply put, Moscow, unlike the West, used a whole-of-government approach. Putin is taking advantage of Russia's military superiority to Ukraine and Western risk aversion. Russia has the world's second strongest army while Ukraine is ranked 22nd. Russia has about 4,447 nuclear warheads while Ukraine has none. Under the 1994 Budapest Memorandum, Ukraine gave up its nuclear arsenal, the third largest in the world, in exchange for Russia's promise to respect its sovereignty. Russia has violated that agreement. It broke its promise to its neighbor. And now, on its own, the Ukrainian military will become overwhelmed by Russian forces. Putin privatized the country's major industries and gave them to his political supporters. The U.S. and its allies have instituted economic sanctions targeted at these oligarchs and major financial institutions to inflict pain on Putin's cronies. But in the build-up to the war, Russia has stocked away an estimated $600 billion in foreign reserves to help it survive economic sanctions. Moreover, only about 16% of Russia's foreign exchange reserves are now held in dollars. This is down to 40% from five years ago. One final point. Ukraine is a country that shares America's most cherished values of liberty. It is a true strategic partner to the West. Ukrainians are dying to uphold these values. Ukraine stands in contrast to Putin's vision of an illiberal world order he seeks to impose. Failure to help Ukraine now will lead to an enormous blow to our credibility worldwide. It will hurt our interests globally. Putin will never succeed in destroying Ukrainian identity, but this will not make up for the tragedy unfolding before our eyes. This will not end with Ukraine. We're now living in a new world.